Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about templates in C++, continuing our discussion of generics. And of course, templates are one of our tools for generic programming in C++. Now, this feature I'm going to be talking about today is the default parameter in a template parameter list. And this is actually a relatively old feature. In fact, I'm going to show you that it compiles even on C++ 98, so pre-modern C++, which is 11 and beyond. And the importance of this feature is just to understand or rather uncover that we've actually been using this feature all the time in C++ in the STL, the standard template library with many of the containers and data structures that we've been using. So it'll just give a little bit of an insight. So with that said, let's go ahead and look at an example of how this feature is used. So I've got an example here from some of our previous lessons. So be sure to check those out if class templates are a new concept to you. Uh, that is what you need to know to get started here. But just to recap briefly, we've got a template class here that takes in a type here, a non-object type, so some sort of size here. Maybe we even want to make this size T or unsized int uh, for better type uh, safety here. Uh, and then we've got our actual container here. And what it's going to do is essentially, again, replace all the Ts with our types to just create some container, essentially an array data structure of some fixed size. And we can also have other things like static member variables and some of these things which have been shown in previous lessons in this C++ series. So let's go ahead and get down to instantiating one of these classes here. So you can see some various versions here. There's an int version with five integers and another one with seven. And then I use these uh, static member variables for you know demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just clean this up a little bit. Let's get rid of uh, the rest of that output and just create our two containers here. And I'll go ahead and in fact, let me go ahead and just get rid of all the static member variables again. If you want to review on that, then go ahead to the previous lesson here. But this will just get everything on one screen for us nicely. OK, so again, this um, nothing crazy here. In fact, we can use uh, C++ uh, 98 and still get this to run here. But what I want to show you now is the main item for today's lesson, and that is setting a default value in our template parameter list that is right here. So if I don't specify size, it's just going to take it to be 10 here. So let's go ahead and just remove this parameter here. And I'll go ahead and compile it, and it certainly compiles. And just for debugging purposes, if you want, you could go ahead and do a little bit of a C out here. And just output size, which again, we probably want to do this in production code. Uh, but if we go ahead and run this, you'll go ahead and see the default parameter 10 is what is taken here if we don't specify it. And we can even do this for the uh, previous uh, parameter here. And I could just assume that everything's an int here. So I could go ahead and uh, get rid of all the template parameters here and just have by default, uh, if I compile things, a class that would be an int with 10 integers. Now notice here this time where I've said int here and I've compiled with C++ 98, it is complaining about this. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a modern version here. And it looks like C++ 20 is what we at least need. Let's try 17. Let's even try 14. 14 doesn't work. Now, why does it start working with version 17? Well, that's where we got this fun uh, acronym, which was covered in a previous video. I'm going to just bump this up to 20, uh, called CTAD. And again, you can watch one of the previous lessons to uh, see that actual acronym. That class template argument deduction was improved here. So again, we could have uh, the defaults here and deduce what this uh, these arguments are actually going to be, uh, either from the template parameter list or the actual uh, constructor and its initializer list. OK, so with that said, let me go ahead and just copy this into uh, CPP Insights and just show you that so long as we have at least version 17 or beyond, that will get a version of our container instantiated with uh, an int, and it should have 10 for one of these versions. And we could go ahead and see that this is for the version instantiated from line 22. Now, again, this is just kind of cool because then we can have some defaults. Or if we know we're going to use a container in a specific sort of way, we could provide those defaults if that's going to be the common use case. But there might be rare instances where we might want to use something else. And in fact, that's how a lot of the standard template library is 
actually structure. So for instance, let's go ahead and look at something that we have seen quite often, vector. And you'll go ahead and see that there's actually two parameters in the template parameter list here, one for an allocator. And there's pretty much always this default allocator here that we don't otherwise have to specify. So that's just a little uh, trick here that we've seen this. Now, this gives us a lot of power actually knowing about some of these things, because maybe these containers are something that you want to optimize or use some other type of allocator in some way. Again, the C++ standard library comes with quite a bit of thought put behind it so that you could override this particular uh, functionality. And in fact, even things like strings, for instance, uh, which have many different uh, characteristics that you could change, like the different traits here, the allocator, and even a kind of a fun one here, unique pointer, where you can have this custom deleter here, which is something I'm going to talk about in a future lesson very soon and why we need to understand that templates can have default parameters here. So folks, with that said, I hope this was an interesting lesson. I hope it gave you just a little bit more abilities or flexibility with your templates if you know there are good defaults that you should be taking or use cases. Of course, you want to be able to document these things. And my suggestion would be to actually look at the standard template library just to see maybe some use cases for where you want good defaults, like things for allocators if you're really getting deep into the systems aspect of whatever library you're building or your code base. So I hope you found that interesting, folks. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll look forward to seeing you in some future lessons soon. Take care, folks. Comment below if you have anything to say. Give it a big thumbs up if you didn't know about this feature or it was a good refresher. And again, take care.